Hello to all of you. My name is Maria Konjelska and this is Poland Daily Culture. And today more Poland Daily Philosophy because we continue our discussions about Jan Łukasiewicz. With me in the studio is Szymawit Gawit. Hello. Szymawit, how do you feel altogether as a philosopher in the world? Oh, well, um, my attitude is uh, kind of uh, ambivalent because it's not very easy to be a philosopher. Now, nowadays, there's a lot of uh, competition. You need to write uh, articles and publish them. You need to attend uh, conferences. Especially right now during COVID. It's so yes, it's very demanding. difficult. Yes, a lot of, confer a lot of uh, conf conferences are being uh, cancelled or they are being held uh, via Zoom or other online platforms, which, well, to tell you the truth, uh, it really doesn't work. <laughs> Lack of the meeting. And yes. And also exchanging thoughts and philosophy is usually a debate. Yes, and you and you you are just sitting in front of your uh, laptop and just, just looking saying at what you want, what have to say. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> yes. But Jan Łukasiewicz didn't have those problems before, even though there were many other many difficulties in his time yeah. because he survived two wars. He did. But just to say, he was not only a philosopher, but he also was also a dean of Warsaw University. And whenever today we enter the main library at Warsaw University, so our beautiful green building in Warsaw, you see the statue of Łukasiewicz. And not only that. Yes. Uh, there's uh, the statue of uh, Kazimierz Twardowski, uh, Leśniewski and Tarski, I believe. So the, the, it's like the creme of the creme of philosophers just there. And as a philosopher myself, it just warms my heart up that that philosophy has, has had such a huge influence. Yeah. And Łukasiewicz was twice uh, a dean of uh, Warsaw University in yes. years. And before that, in 1919, uh, he was. Uh, a minister of higher uh, education in Paderewski's uh, cabinet. So philosophers had a huge role and they were treated actually uh, as a uh, at least uh, brains who are people who have uh, enough developed brain to think. Well, his <laughs> well his uh, his ministry. I mean, his being a minister lasted less than a year. I guess eleven months, something like this. And then he went back to his uh, work in uh, academia. Fair enough. But also, uh, he was able to uh, already. He started already a cooperation between Lviv and Warsaw University with, for example, Dublin or other international um, universities uh, around Europe. So uh, definitely his contribution is about the fact that he opened up our school and Łukasiewicz is recognized in the world and is uh, at least in uh, by logicians. Of course. Uh, so, well, so first of all, he was, uh, he had a lot of students and one of his uh, students were uh, Kazimierz uh, Ajdukiewicz. Uh, and Tadeusz Kotarbiński, one of the greatest philosophers in the Lviv Warsaw School. Um, he also worked closely with Stanisław Leśniewski and uh, Alfred uh, Tarski, and they were the three logicians, the best logicians um, in Polish uh, history um, at that time, and they are known as the Warsaw School of Logic. And so, yes, they had a lot of uh, contributions, uh, well, in the world. Well, to meet three of them in one room probably was a difficult experience. Yes. <laughs> you just, like, they were like three uh, high, highly qualified, amazing minds with very sharp thoughts. Yes, three geniuses. Three geniuses. So it's interesting that the, in those times uh, we had uh, so many amazing brain, amazing uh, thinkers, which were closely cooperating with each other. But what is interesting, back to life of Jan Łukasiewicz, that he didn't die in Poland. No, he did not. He died in Dublin, where he moved with his wife uh, after the war. So in uh, 44, in 1944, two weeks before uh, the Warsaw uh, uprising, uh, he fled to 
uh, he was trying to get to Switzerland, to Switzerland, but in order to do so, he had to go uh, to Münster. But he couldn't leave uh, Münster at that time because there were some problems with. There was this attempt to kill Hitler, and everything got very intense. So he had to stay. I mean, they had to stay uh, with his wife. And then he went to Brussels for, for one year, and in 1946, uh, they moved to Dublin, uh, where he died. Uh, and he never came back to Poland because he didn't... Oh, why, did he, uh, why did he escape Warsaw in uh, 1944? Because the Red Army was uh, approaching. So he didn't want that. He, he didn't want to live under uh, the Red uh, occupation. He understood what communism is and what it Yeah, I think so, yes. So they bring. But and so he never went back to Poland and he died in Dublin. Uh, he's, he was buried in, uh, in uh, Dublin. And he was teaching uh, at a lot of universities, um, a Royal uh, Irish uh, Academy, uh, Dublin University uh, College, among others. Funny thing how history repeats itself, because later on, for example, Kowakowski also leaves Poland because of communism and is emigrating to Britain. So we lose so many uh, amazing minds. We did, in, we did. In philosophy, uh, because of the system. Yes, because of the war, well, Tarski uh, left for uh, the United States, and he had a lot of students there. Uh, and so that's why, well, he didn't have students here in Poland. Uh, well, and as for uh, Leszniewski, he died in 1939, so because of lung uh, cancer, he was a smoker. Oh, I see. At yeah. least the dermis didn't kill him. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, but those are, those are the prices which, which we still had needed to pay also yes. in our thoughts, which not many people mention and that show, but when you destroy the country, you destroy also uh, all the uh, intellectual background which we had and people which we basically cannot just rebuild because uh, those, uh, the school and uh, the students that they had, they couldn't pass the knowledge to other, to mo probably more people. That's why, of course, development somehow stops with them. Yes, but I have to mention that during the war in Warsaw, uh, Wukasiewicz uh, was teaching uh, at the underground university. So, so, he, so he, he was trying to, you know, um, revive, revive uh, and well, or continue uh, this, well, teaching of, of younger uh, generations. Of philosophers. Very interesting as well. Could you imagine sitting in Warsaw when there are bombs just, uh, or Germans walking the streets, bombarding, you don't have enough food and you're Actually, sitting in a basement and learning logic, for example. Actually, their apartment was bombed in uh, 39 and they lost everything. Uh, yeah, so he was working uh, in as far as I remember, in Warsaw uh, archives. I see, so. For a small salary. Amazing. And simultaneously well. teaching in the, in the uh, underground university, so. And so, uh, just the fact, what, what kind of feeling it needed to be also when you just smuggle in uh, to learn a little bit of logic. Yeah. <laughs> just between the, when, when Germans were checking what you're doing, because of course we have to mention that the Germans shut down the university. Yes, they did, of course. Just to stop them. I stopped the knowledge, I stopped the teaching, and they also murdered uh, many uh, uh, professors and academic people. Yeah, like academia, in Krakow. Yeah, especially they did. in Krakow. So uh, hopefully and thankfully, uh, Wukasiewicz was a part of Warsaw Lviv School, <laughs> so he, he was not murdered there in Krakow yes. with, <clears throat> with other, other great professors. All of this amazing life and shows that the fascinating and also terrible uh, history of Poland and also the history of Polish philosophy as well. And I do hope you will learn a little bit more about Warsaw Lviv School and you will stay with us for the next episode. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.